So determining characteristics of sine and cosine from a graph. Um, so that's where we're starting today. Go ahead and grab your notes and let's get going. That's geometry, there we go. Okay. Graphs of sine and cosine. Okay, so we're gonna start with just kind of the standard, what a graph of sine or cosine looks like. Um, so we're gonna start with sine. So f of x equals sine of x. And you can graph this in a graphing calculator, you can graph this um, on Desmos. At this point, you're gonna want your calculator to be in radian mode um, most of the time. Um, because a lot of times when we, from here on out, answer questions about sine and cosine, stuff like that, it's going to be in uh, radians. When we deal with things like, um, that we'll define in a moment, like period and stuff like that, that's all gonna be given to us in radians. So if you're using a TI calculator, take a moment, and notice mine's in degree mode right now. So we're gonna hit mode and we're going to change it to radian. Second, quit. Okay, so now we're in radian mode. And if I were to go to y equals um, and hit sine of x, um, and check my window real quick um, and go negative two pi on my x minimum, x maximum is gonna be positive two pi, y minimum will go, oh, negative four to positive four is fine for now. And then we'll hit graph. And notice that that is what a graph of sine looks like. If you have something other than a TI-84, or if you have a um, Desmos that you're using instead, um, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Actually, we'll take a look at that now. Um, so if you're using Desmos instead uh, and you want to follow along here, feel free to open up a window of Desmos. All right, and when you get to Desmos, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is click the wrench and make sure that radian mode is highlighted. Uh, and then you can also change your formatting here, your x-axis, you can put like negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi for the steps and all of that with steps of pi. So you can see how it um, steps it out like that. And then I would just type in sine of x. And the nice thing here is that you can then grab points like this. You can notice at the top point here, you can notice where it crosses the X axis and stuff like that. That's really helpful. Um, all of these points along here are gonna be important to us when we talk about things like uh, amplitude and period and um, things like that. So let's get started talking about those things. Um, so first of all, if we were going to graph sine by hand, Uh, sine is a function that starts at zero. And it starts off by going up. And if it's just written as sine of x like this, it goes up one. Levels off and comes back down. Uh, and you guys can't see that because we're not on the notes page. Sorry about that. Okay, so sine starts off at zero, goes up to one and comes back down. As you could see on Desmos, the spot, the X value where it comes back down to zero is pi. And then, 
it goes down to negative one. And then it comes back up to zero and that lands there at two pi. And it continues doing that and going through these cycles. Um, and so uh, the cycle is one S motion like this. Or you could also consider a cycle going from peak to peak or from trough to trough. And the period, the first number that we care about, uh, is the distance that it takes or the time that it takes to go through one cycle. And so in this case, the standard period for both sine and cosine is 2 pi. That's kind of your typical period. Um, so if the function is not changed at all uh, in terms of the period, it's going to have a period of 2 pi. And you can tell that from the graph by going from either um, measuring uh, the x distance through one cycle here, or you could, um, let's see, if I were to go backwards here, this would be negative pi. I could measure from trough to trough. Uh, and so this is negative pi over 2, this is 3 pi over 2, this is pi over 2. This x distance here is 2 pi, that's one period. You could measure from trough to trough or from peak to peak. Um, you could also measure by going through the middle points. You just have to be careful because it, it reaches the middle um, three times total in a cycle. So you'd have to skip one of the middles to go from 0 to 2 pi to get one full cycle of sine or cosine. Okay, so that's the standard period for sine and cosine. Sometimes it's different. Um, the period you know, if, if it goes through more cycles in one, um, like the period could be pi or it could be longer. It could take a longer time for it to go through an entire cycle. Um, but that would involve modifying the function itself, um, which we'll talk a little bit more about modifying the function itself um, tomorrow. Today, we're gonna mostly focus on looking at graphs. Okay, so that's period, time it takes to complete one full cycle. The next thing we care about is the amplitude. Okay, um, so the amplitude is basically the distance from the midline up to the peak or from the midline down to the trough. And the midline, as we might guess, goes right through the middle of the function. So in this case, in the standard sine curve, it's that uh, x-axis here. This is the midline. So then the amplitude of a typical sine function is 1. But we could go up further, like if I went up to um, instead up to two or something like that, the amplitude would be two. Um, and you can also move the midline around based on uh, doing different manipulations again of this function. But the standard amplitude is one. Um, vertical shift is another number that we care about.
And vertical shift works just like it does on um, any other function, pretty much. Like if you move a line up or down, or if you move, um, if you move a quadratic up or down. Um, like, so if we had f of x equals sine of x plus d, whatever number is in here for d is going to be the vertical shift. So for example, if I had f of x equals sine of x plus 2, if I was going to graph that then, I would move my midline up 2. And my new sine function would look something like this. So typically, a, a sine function does not have any vertical shift. If it's just written like this, f of x equals sine of x, the standard sine function has no vertical shift, just like the standard quadratic has no vertical shift. But if I were to move it up or down, this would create a vertical shift like that. OK. And then uh, the last thing, instead of horizontal shift, um, there's something called phase shift. Phase shift is pretty much horizontal shift. OK, and the way that horizontal shift works within a um, sine or cosine function, we'll talk about what that does with the function itself tomorrow. Um, but graphically, um, let's say that it was phase shifted um let's go with when it what or so when sine is phase shifted it doesn't start at zero anymore it starts somewhere else so if it was phase shifted uh, and you can tell how much based off of where the next peak or trough ends up being. Um, so let's say this is at pi over 4 is where your first peak is instead. Typically, your first peak is at pi over 2. But if it wasn't, um, it would end up starting somewhere in the middle here. And then uh, continuing to move through its um, move through its typical cycle. Um, so in this case, you can tell the phase shift uh, that it's been moved back. by pi over 4. Um, I believe most of what we'll be looking at is not going to, or graphically, it's a little bit harder to tell phase shift from the graph, from the graph than it is from the equation itself. Um, so I don't think in the homework there's quite as much of that um, until we get to tomorrow's where you'll look at phase shift from the perspective of the function. So the main three that we're focusing on today are period, amplitude, and vertical shift. Um, but anyway, that's a sine function. The cosine function is very similar. Um, so if you grab your graphing device again, and you go to y equals, and you drop down one and go to cosine of x, and hit graph, We see that it's very similar to a sine function. It's just a little bit out of sync with it. Like if I were to move this cosine function over a bit, it would match up with sine. Um, and you can also do that on a Desmos. Um, but for the sake of time, we're going to move forward with um, cosine. 
Uh, so f of x equals cosine of x. And we're not going to go through all this period amplitude vertical shift stuff again because it's all the same for sine and cosine. It's just a different label on the function and a slightly different look to things. So cosine has the same standard period as sine. It's 2 pi. The difference is that instead of starting at 0 like uh, sine does, cosine starts up at 1 and goes down. So cosine starts up at 1 and goes down like that. And it reaches its trough at pi reaches the midline again at 3 pi over 2, and reaches a peak again at 2 pi. So on cosine, it's actually even a little bit easier to tell um, what your period is because it starts at a peak at 0 and ends with its other peak at 2 pi. So you can measure peak to peak a little bit easier on a cosine function. The standard amplitude is the same. This, uh, the way that vertical shift happens is the same. Um, if I were to move the midline up or down, that's what we're kind of considering there. Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're close. Okay. Um, so that's kind of the typical how sine and cosine functions work, how we can analyze the graph. Uh, we're going to go over and take a look at the IXL section for this, and then we're going to be done. Okay, so we're looking at these two IXLs. They're find properties of sine functions and find properties of cosine functions. It's all from the graph. Um, so first it'll say find the period of this sine function. So you'll wanna go, okay, peak to peak here. Uh, or you could go starting at zero, skip, a, um, skip one and go to the next zero. This one has a period of pi. So you can either think of it that way as um, one full s goes from zero to pi. Or you can uh, go from measure from peak to peak and figure it out that way as well. For this one, it says to find the amplitude. So notice that this one is moved down. So our midline is down here. So from the midline, at negative two up to the peak is one half. So 0 0.5. The amplitude is always positive. I don't think it'll take 0 0.5 actually. Uh, you might have to go one half. You can also take just the vertical distance between the trough and the peak and divide by two if you want to. That would also work. Find the vertical shift. So where's the midline? Well, it's down three. So the vertical shift would be negative three. Okay, so those are all the kinds of questions that you're going to see throughout your IXL today. Um, I'm also going to post an exit ticket in just a moment, but are there any questions at this point for the good of the order? Show how to make it pi again. Um, do you mean from, uh, like on here, how to make pi or how to, uh, on Desmos? Okay. Um, where'd my Desmos window go? So like how to make this go by increments of pi? If you click the wrench, uh, and you click on the X axis, you can go from whatever you would like, like you can go negative two pi to positive two pi, or you can go negative 10 pi to positive two pi or whatever you'd like to go to on here. And then the steps is where you wanna um, be careful. You can make it the steps of pi, you can make it steps of pi over two. 
Uh, you can make it steps of two pi if you would like to. Um, you can change it however you would like to on the steps, but that makes it really convenient to grab points when you make it as steps of pi over two or steps of pi over three or um, things like that. Yeah, I also have a video that I'll post later that has um, just kind of basics how to graph sine and cosine uh, in Desmos. So I'll uh, link that today as well. Any other questions or concerns here for today? Okay, and like I said, we're gonna be going through this all week long. So if you don't get it this very moment, um, chances are it just might take you a day or two. Um, so don't worry about it. Um, but if you want help, feel free to come to office hours and we can uh, start getting things figured out. Otherwise, I think we are over our time for today. So uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow.